book called The Dominance Factor, and it is gaining um, a lot of interest around the world. So what is this book about? Well, you know, I've been fascinated by learning styles and dominance since the 1970s. And uh, in the 1980s, I was given a tool that seems to really work to find dominance patterns very early on. And uh, it's been very fascinating to me. Now, dominance patterns, uh, I believe, from my hypothesis, are developed in utero at nine weeks after conception when the moral reflex develops. The moral reflex is the reflex that has to do with our survival. And at that time, we develop lead functions for survival. Like, for instance, we develop a lead arm so that if I'm assaulted by somebody, I will use one arm to protect myself without having to think. It's a reflexive kind of thing. And I'll use one leg to run to get away from an assailant. And we know that there's one dominant eye, the lead eye, a lead eye, and the other will follow it. Uh, we're not totally binocular because of our noses here. And also there's a lead ear. And we've also discovered through PET scans and other means that there's a, a dominant brain that we tend to lean on that tends to be uh, our lead function. And the non-dominant brain tends to shut down by 75 to 85% when we're in survival, when we're in stress. Hmm. And because uh, you don't need, apparently, the brain to be creative or to come up with new ideas uh, or think deeply. You just need to react. So these dominance patterns for survival tend to also, because they are used the most within our lives, uh, survival is the base need that we have, um, they tend to be hardwired. And so we kind of lean on them whenever we come into a new learning situation or a new social situation. And so what we're finding is that we can tell people's learning styles by looking at their dominance patterns. And again, how, sort of how they are going to respond initially in a new situation. And it's quite fascinating. It sounds like it. It sounds like it. So how do you, how do you find this dominance profile? <laughs> well, there are, are different ways. The most accurate way is by using a muscle check. Now, what, uh, what is a muscle check? Okay. M muscle checking has been used for over 100 years by many practitioners uh, in many professions, different professions. But what we're using is the, the spindle fibers, the action in the muscle. Now, up in your brain, you have an area that is the motor cortex where nerves come from that motor cortex, cross over and go down to the muscles, say, of the arm or the hand. And they uh, cause the muscles of the hand to either contract or relax so that you can do what you want to do. Now also, in the muscles, there are what we call spindle fibers that send a message back to the brain to what we call the sensory cortex. Uh, and they let us know if the muscle is contracted or relaxed. It's what we call proprioception. It gives us a, a sense of where we are in space. Well, we can use that because um, when something is hardwired, you can easily hold up muscles and muscle check, and there's no uh, stress on that. There's no worry about it. So let me, let me, if I can just show you. Sure. Okay, for a moment. So I'm going to take this arm here, and I'm going to have you say your name. Say, my name is? My name is Breeze. And hold your arm up. Great. Now, I'm going to, say, I'm going to have you say, my name is Pinocchio. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Pinocchio. And hold your arm up. Push. Oh. Hmm. So your arm goes down. Now, what we find from that is... My guess is you've said my name is Breeze a few times in your life. I have. Many times, right? Right. 
and that you could drive a car and say your name is Breeze. Mm -hmm. And so even look at street signs and say your name is Breeze while you're driving the car. And maybe even talk on your cell phone. I never do that. Okay, okay. So, but you can do all these things because it's hardwired. You've got the nerve networks that say my name is Breeze and they're connected. But when you say my name is Pinocchio, your brain goes, wait a minute, wait. And it's attempting to find that connection. And when it does, the message from the brain to the arm is decreased. That's all that's happening. And so the arm will then go down. It has nothing to do with strength. It has to do with what is going on in the brain. And because of that, we can use it as a gauge to find out what is hardwired. And so it is the most accurate. Dr. George Goodhart uh, started using the muscle checking to find dominance way back in the 1980s. And so we can do that to find dominance. All right. So um, let's, let's hear a little bit more about how these dominance profiles work. Um, do you want to, well, would you like me to do your dominance profile? Sure. All right. Let's do that. Okay. So um, I'm just going to